Hello and welcome to this exciting live webinar discussing the future of SEO and ranking websites. I'm your co-host Matt Anton. In a few minutes Dan will be joining us and leading the discussion. Uh, if you want to interact with us please look in the lower right hand corner you'll see talk with us. Here you can enter your name and email and then you can submit questions or comments. Uh, can everyone hear me? If you can hear me please let me know by typing in 4 in the chat room. Okay, good. Everyone can hear me. Uh, now, a brief, a brief intro on me. Like I said, my name is Matt Anton. I've been doing online marketing for over eight years. I was the online marketing manager of Liberty Travel, which is a billion-dollar company. I saw the excessive fees that we were being that we were charging for SEO, pay-per-click, social media, etc. And I decided to start offering services and consultations on my own. Uh, but I'm not the star of the show. So before we begin, I I would just like to know where is everyone from. I'm in New Jersey here, and Dan, who's going to be presenting, lives in Georgia. Okay, see a couple of New Yorkers, Texas, oh, our friend across the pond here in the UK. Okay, so we've had an amazing turnout so far. We had thousands of people register to this live webinar. Now, this is my first rodeo. I'm a webinar virgin. Uh, is anyone else here experienced or new to webinars? Whether hosted one yourself or you've been to one before. Okay, so it's a, it's a mixed bag. Some people have been to one before. Others, this is their first as well. Uh, but we have something really exciting and awesome to talk to you about. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, are many of you business owners, direct business owners, or are you a marketing agency or an SEO company, or do you do a little bit of everything? Okay, seeing somebody says they're a social media and SEO company. I think that's probably going to be the norm. Some small business owners direct as well. Um, now, what is your main concern when it comes to SEO? I'd like to tell you mine. Mine is, is SEO viable as a long-term investment in website marketing? Uh, you know, I'm sure, did, I'm sure some of your websites got hit uh, with the late, latest Google updates uh, because as Mario Andretti said, if everything feels under control, you probably aren't going nearly as fast enough. So whether you have some test sites or uh, unfortunately maybe even client sites that got hit, you know things are getting harder and harder every day in SEO to rank. And right now, we're going to start talking to you about what works in SEO right now and what's obviously going to be the future of SEO uh, with Dan Anton. So, <clears throat> excuse me, now that everyone's in the room, I'd like to uh, intro again. Welcome, everyone. I introed myself briefly before. I'm not going to do it again. I, my name is Matt Anton. I'm an online marketer. I grew up with uh, two pug dogs. I currently live with my wife and daughter. I enjoy eating bacon. And this webinar is going to give you knowledge and we know knowledge is power this is going to be an eye-opening experience and it's really hard to say that there's something new under the sun in regards to SEO but here it is uh, I love SEO and this is something that has really got me excited as well so I'm sure you're really going to enjoy this as well again if you if you want to interact with us please look in the lower right hand corner the talk with us button enter your name and email and then you can submit questions comments or just say hi now, I might not be able to get to all of them during the presentation as Dan talks, uh, but we will answer as many questions as we can after the presentation. Okay, now for Dan, Dan Anton, the presenter, if you don't know, Dan has presidential-like credentials. He graduated with honors from Montclair State University and then went on to officer training school. He completed ranger school, which is grueling. They actually had a discovery show about it. He served two tours in Iraq as an infantry army ranger major receiving two Bronze Stars for Valor in Combat, and he was featured in the book The Gods of Diala, which is a province in Iraq. If you've ever watched Band of Brothers, he is the guy jumping out of the planes. He's also the creator of Backlinks Indexer, which many of you are familiar with, which is going on four years the number one rated way to get your links indexed in Google. 
He's been making money online since 1996 when he started selling video games online, and he's been involved with software and online marketing for nearly 20 years. Uh, without further ado, let us begin with Dan Anton and the future of SEO live webinar. All right. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate that intro. Not sure if I can live up to that hype, but I will certainly do my best. Um, just want to make sure, can everyone hear me right now? Just give me a yes, Dan, I can hear you in the chat room, and Matt can relay that back to me. So let me know if we've got everyone there can hear me, Matt. I have a couple people saying they can hear you. Okay, good. All right, I'll get right into it then. Well, first, I just want to thank you guys for coming out tonight on a Wednesday. I'm not sure if there's some good shows to watch tonight or not, but uh, you chose to be here instead, and I'm, I appreciate that. Um, myself, personally, I just usually watch, watch The Walking Dead, and that's all I have time for in my life. But I'll get right into this webinar. So the topic is, what is the future of SEO? And uh, really excited about this topic because uh, a lot of a lot of hype in the SEO industry, people usually chasing shiny objects, what's the latest and greatest thing. But this is actually something I think you're going to enjoy. So if you look at this chart, these are the search metrics ranking factors of 2014. And you can see right away that the top one is click-through rate. Now let's refer to this as CTR going forward. But you can see this is number one, followed by relevant terms, which would be like your on-page content. Number three, social signals, your Google Plus Ones. And then the fourth factor, black, uh, backlinks, which are still extremely important. But this should be an eye-opening kind of metric to you to look at right now and just see the dynamic to how SEO is shifting to CTR. All right. Now let's look at this guy here, Rand Fishkin. Now who here knows who Rand Fishkin is? Just shout it out if you if you know who, who this guy is. Yep, many people are familiar with him, Dan. Okay. Yeah, so Rand's a guy from Moz, if you guys aren't familiar, and he's kind of the head honcho over there. And SEO, or excuse me, uh, Moz pretty much has to deal with all things SEO. They do software, they do a lot of blogs and study type posts. Well, anyway, he had a, uh, you know, a hunch and a theory about CTR, and he had this tweet where he said, do you care to help with a Google theory test he's doing? Could you search for iMac Lab in Google and click the link for his blog? And he said he had, his hunt, had a hunch about it. So at the time he sent this tweet, the page had already been live and indexed for about nine days. All right, so if you were to Google iMac Lab at 6.03 p.m., you could see it was ranked number seven. But three hours later after that tweet, 228 clicks later, you see it's now ranking number one. So right away you see something's pretty pretty important here. All right, so three or excuse me after after that he sends out another tweet and he says, hey, three hours after that tweet the page is ranking number one for that query. No new links, it was just the searches and the clicks. So pretty amazing stuff right there. All right, so we're going to repeat this experiment. Okay, so for the next one, if you looked at the term the buzzy pain distraction, there's a site ranking number ten uh, for science-based medicine. Now this is a post that was eight days old. They already published it and it was sitting at number 10 for that, for that time period. So he wanted to do another test. So he sent out this tweet. What should you do, do during the lull in the World Cup match? Help me run a test. And then he put this link here. And now this link didn't go directly to the website because that would defeat the purpose of the test. So this link actually went to this form where he wanted you to put your email in and essentially give you directions and said please search for the buzzy pain distraction, and then record the ranking position that you observe for the blog post um, for the sciencebasedmedicine.org website. So then people could select wh wh where it was ranking and submit it. Now, if you look at this test, 315 clicks later, two hours later, it was ranking number five. Now, if you remember, it was number 10, and then they sent this out, and now it's ranking number five. Well, another 30 minutes later, so three hours total, and 375 clicks total is now ranking number one. And this is all based on clicks and uh, you know CTR essentially. So it, it would seem that queries and clicks seem to have a direct effect on rankings. And I think you guys are just having light bulb moments right now. Uh, if you know you thought maybe this was part of the algorithm or you weren't really sure about it, because there's there's been theories about this for years. Absolutely. People know people know and can trust Moz and especially Rand Fishkin. And when he's showcasing the power of CTR, 
uh, they know you can take that to the bank. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Definitely, people. I mean, Moz is definitely an authority blog. Whether you know whether you buy into the white hat versus black hat thing, they do test and they test very well. So we're going to go into this some more. So there are two user metrics that both Google and Bing have direct access to. That's the click-through rate and dwell time. Now the first one, CTR, is the first metric that Google makes broad use of, and we know this already. So whether or not a result gets clicked on is one of Google and Bing's first clues about whether any given result is a good match to a search query. And we know that they have this data because they actually report this to us. If you were to look in Webmaster Tools, you see that Google tells you the CTR. And if you were to look in Bing, this is what they report. They also report CTR. So we know that Google factors CTR heavily into their paid search as well, AdWords um, primarily. So if any of you guys out there have ever used AdWords, you know how crucial it is to get your ad copy perfect to drive your CTR up. Um, Matt can speak on that. He's an AdWords guru, always trying to tweak and test. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny because your, your entire campaign can live or die based on your CTR. So even if you have the greatest offer, and the, the greatest landing page, if you don't have compelling ad copy, which is basically an on-page SEO, your meta title, and, a, and, a, and the meta description, which is akin to the subtext of the ad copy, you're, you're going to be paying a lot more because Google only gets paid on those clicks. And, uh, and like Dan is saying here, it goes the reason that if they use it for AdWords, they're going to use that same logic uh, for organic SEO. Yeah, exactly. Matt. It only it only stands to reason because if they're using it for for AdWords and they're paid um, service, you know that they at least are, are measuring it for organic search, and we know that relevant results drive more clicks. All right. So the second metric I want to talk to you about is dwell time. This is synonymous with low bounce rate. So dwell time measures how long it takes for someone to return to the search engine after clicking on a result already, and it can be measured directly from their own data. Now, Google hasn't been quite so forthcoming in, in admitting this piece of information, but there's a piece of evidence that strongly suggests that they do measure dwell time. So Google tested a feature um, where if you clicked a listing and then you quickly came back to the search engine, so in other words, if your dwell time was really low, another and very high bounce rate, that you would get this strange option to block that site. And it looked like this. And... They don't offer this anymore, but at the time they were testing this, if you were to go into Google and type in SEO software, for example, and then you found seomoz.org and you clicked on it, and then you bounced right off of it, you know, in other words, you just it wasn't relevant to what you really wanted and you didn't like it and you came right back to the search engine, it would give you this option to block it. So the fact that they showed this obviously is a signal that they're measuring dwell time. And like I said, this feature is no longer available. I don't know why they decided to you know, not use it, and they were only testing it for whatever reason, but we know that that is there. So it stands the reason that CTR plus dwell time is a killer combination in the search engine's eyes. So when you can combine these, it's, it's, it's really a no-brainer. CTR by itself, though, is, is, is not a good indicator because it can easily be manipulated. There are lots of robots out there and other kind of bot software, Alexa boosters, things that just drive lots of meaningless traffic to your website that just comes right off of it. You know, they're coming from countries like India and Bangladesh, which you, you probably just get like crazy bounce rate through the roof. The traffic is just meaningless to you. And if you artificially drive up that CTR and your site doesn't fulfill on that promise, then that's going to drive up your bounce rate and it means that you're not relevant. So Google will penalize you for that in a sense. Yeah, I can attest to that. We've we've created websites over the years as test using, you know, Jonathan Ledger's, which is an awesome product, the best spinner, and mm -hmm. other spinning software where it just spits out thousands and thousands and thousands of pages. And you and we do get the traffic, but it's short lived because Google's definitely tracking the bounce rate and definitely tracking uh, dwell time and average time spent on page. Uh, so C T R without dwell time is uh, is no bueno. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you need the dwell time. It's the key ingredient here to to make sense of this. And you see a lot of those clickbait headlines. Google basically just wants to reward a good title to a website. So if your content, you know, is coming through on the promise, then that's that's exactly what Google wants to reward you for. So if you have both high CTR and high dwell time, you're almost always going to have quality uh, results and higher rank as a byproduct of that. 
Okay, so I think the cat's out of the bag here, and uh, the secret is exposed. So if you were to open up Google and enter in your main keyword and click search, and then go through those pages until you found your site, found it listed there, and then you clicked on it, and then you browsed your site while also going through some of the other internal pages, staying on there for certain times, consuming that content, and then when you're all said and done, after a few minutes, you exit your website. Now, two years ago, I stumbled across this concept I would later call crowd search optimization. And at the time, CTR was more of a theory, and it even still is now to a lot of people. So uh, I w the backstory, I'll keep it brief, was I was creating a video tutorial for some of my offline clients. And in this video tutorial, I would the URL was really long for this demonstration website I was trying to talk about. So I would just type in the keyword and quickly go to page two and then click on the result I knew had good internal linking structure for my demonstration. So I instructed everyone in my video to go there and take a look at this, uh, this website for their internal linking structure, which looked really good to me. And so people did that, and you know I didn't think much of it. Days went by, I think a week went by, and I wanted to make a follow-up video for um, pretty much a similar, similar thing I wanted to expand upon the internal linking structure. So I went to find this website again. So I naturally type in the keyword, go to page two, and I don't see it. I can't find it. So I go to page three thinking maybe he slipped in rankings. Wasn't on page three either. Apparently he jumped to page number one, right up to number two position. So he went from 14 to two in in less than a week. And I immediately thought this guy was, you know, an SEO guru. He knew obviously what he was doing. So I I think I Skyped Matt, or I don't know if we were using some other chat messenger back then, but I, sent a, I talked to him, and I said, hey, you mind doing some analysis on this guy's website um, because his ranking position just moved overnight pretty much, and I'm just curious what he did. Yeah. Matt, do you remember when I came to you with that? Yeah, I threw him in uh, Hrefs and Majestic just to see what he was doing, and it was crazy because he had no no new backlinks, no new social signals, or anything else meaningful that you could track off page. Uh, so it was really just, I, I chalked it up to whatever Dan was talking about his theory at the time, which is obviously now crowd search optimization. Yeah, so after Matt told me all that, I was just you know kind of dumbfounded, didn't really think a whole lot of it. And then I, over, maybe that night or the next day, I just started thinking, I said, well, maybe everyone who I've been instructing on my video series has you know been typing in these keywords, going to his site and browsing it and trying to figure out the internal linking structure. And as a byproduct of that, this guy's site just ranked to the page one. So I wanted to recreate the process. And in order to do that, I uh, had a bunch of virtual assistants to search for my keyword and go through the pages until they found my website and then click on it. Sounds good in theory, right? Well, my test failed miserably. Does anyone want you uh, don't have any ideas. Out, you're cutting out slightly, Dan. Just Am I? It, yeah. I mean, I heard the gist of it. Okay. Sorry for any technical difficulties here. No, that's good now. Okay. No, I just wanted. I just said that my test failed miserably trying to recreate this process, and I uh, wanted to ask if anyone in the audience had any guesses as to why it failed. Just, just shout it out if you guys have any kind of answer. Matt, just let me know a couple of them. Untargeted traffic, other okay. countries. Yeah. Others are saying high bounce rate. Yep. Okay, you guys are on it. You guys are you got a smart crowd here tonight. I'll go through them. So number one was I wasn't well. No one mentioned this, but maybe you would have been if if given enough time. I wasn't getting enough searches for the volume of the keyword, and I probably chose a keyword that had too high of search volume for what I could really do, but I wasn't able to make a dent in the number of searches I really needed each day to uh, to rank higher. Number two, the virtual assistants I hired, they weren't staying on the site long enough. Even though I told them to, you know, stay on for a couple minutes and do, you know, view various pages, I'm sure most of them, for the most part, didn't care. They just went to the site, clicked on, uh, clicked on the main site, and then bounced off it. I actually lost rank because I, my bounce rate went to some crazy number because of this. And then uh, number three, I wasn't getting any good traffic from my target markets of primarily the U.S. And yeah, like that one person said, a lot of traffic from India and Bangladesh and things like that, which didn't really do me any good at the end of the day. I, I want to chime in real quick. I actually, yeah. uh, I got, sorry, Dan, I got, 
I tested it out on a press release recently, and I had someone search for it because I wanted to do you know reputation management for someone for free. Since you know I created the press release, I submitted it. If it didn't rank, no harm, no foul. If it ranked, I'm a rock star. So I did the same thing. I had a group of people in my Skype search for it. Um, you know, obviously they weren't they weren't in America. They searched for the site, they found it, but you know the CTR was high. But the balance rate was through the roof, and now I can't even find that press release. And that's an authority website that I put that press release on too. Wow. Uh, so Google's not playing around with uh, with balance rate and and CTR. Yeah, no, it's 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 just the the natural progression of what they're trying to achieve for these relevant results. But anyway, so I went back to the drawing board. I was not going to give up so easily, guys. And what I did was I wrote a program that I could install on someone's computer and it would assist them in the process of searching for my website in Google, going through the pages until it found my listing and then clicking on it. It would then force that user to browse my site for a set amount of time while also clicking internal links to look completely natural. So I advertised in Craigslist and, and other type uh, small town papers and things like that that I needed people to install my software and then just follow the prompts. And then in exchange, I'd be able to pay them for their time. It was, it was all built into the software. Well, it wasn't long before I started being able to amass this huge army of people who were crowd searching my sites. And I ran a test, and after three weeks, these are the results. So my bounce rate, which was pretty high to begin with, now is down to 7.48%, which is extremely low. And the number of unique users I was able to get was all from my target market of the US. And my keyword rank, the main thing, went from 19 to number three, all based on CTR and dwell time. All right, guys, that was nearly two years ago, though. Since then, we've improved this software and grown the army to the size of a small city. It's huge. We've got guys in the U.S., in the US Canada, U.K., Australia. We're just they're, we're branching out everywhere. Not only that, though, but the software is now private. So these people searching have no idea about the website and the keywords, so you're completely private in the system. Now, what if you guys had access to this crowd search army for your, your URLs and keywords inside of a push button system? Well, here it is, crowdsearch.me. This is a web-based system which allows you to enter your website and keywords so that the crowd search army can organically search for your site and boost your rank. Access to over, it's actually close to 200,000 real people now and this is still growing. There's nothing to download, nothing to install. You just enter your URL and your keyword. It's 100% automated, and it's Google safe and private like I just talked about. And we also have a feature that automatically will optimize your CTR and your bounce rate. And that feature is called Smart Rank Technology. So what this does is it first looks at your current keyword position in Google. So it tracks your rank. And then what it does is it looks at the overall search volume for that keyword, and it determines the perfect number of searches and the amount of dwell time it needs to stay, uh, to stay on your site. And Every 24 hours, it's going to check your keyword rank and uh, adjust the number of searches and the number of minutes to stay on your site. So it constantly flu fluctuates. So whether if your rank's number 70 today, you need different searches and different minutes on your site than you would if you were ranked number 14. And that's what this system does. It does it all automatically. And this is powered by the crowd like I was talking about. We have thousands of real people on their own computers, and it's a completely natural process. No bounces, so um, high dwell time, guys. And if you don't want to use the smart rank feature, you have the ability to actually set how many minutes you want someone to spend on your site, and you can actually set how many searches you want your site to get each day. But we still recommend using smart rank. So let me go to the demo real quick. Just bear with me a second as I click on over to that. And I'll pull it up. All right, just let me know if everyone can see my demo screen real quick. Just give me a five if you can see my demo screen, please. Yep, got some fives. Okay, so here we are inside of the system, guys. And I just want to mention, this is the first time anyone is seeing this outside of Matthew and myself. So this is an internal system prior to right now. Okay, so right off the bat, um, it's a credit-based system. You can see total credits and... Uh, basically, what you'd you'd start here. Don't try to, this video won't play right now because uh, 
it's it's this is just how new this is. I, I need to put a demo here, but it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, I'll show you. So to add a new campaign, you just click this button and just name the campaign, whatever you want. So to call this demo. And you would enter in your URL here. And this URL, you'd want it to be the sp specific URL, even if it's an inner page. Um, I'm just going to pick a minute random, really. Up. Um, and then the keyword I know is free WordPress templates. OK. And then you could also select the search engine you want from Google. So essentially, any of the Google. You can do google.com, Google, uh, excuse me, google.co.uk. They're all here. And then you just click next step. And you may have to wait a minute or two while it finds the keyword and data. So, oh, actually, this one found it really quickly. Wow. <laughs> all right. Um, so you can see right here that Smart Rank is enabled by default, and we do recommend that. So, um, based on this keyword volume of 1,900 search volume per month, it's optimized. Uh, I'm in current. This website's currently ranked 35, so it's going to receive approximately six searches per day, and approximately one minute on the site. And now this flu this fluctuates, guys. So even though this says six and one, it's going to have a plus or minus um, factor built into it. So it's different every day. It's never the same, and because of that, your credit consumption is going to change too. So it may not be seven today. It could be six. It could be nine. Um, it's just all based on that that randomness, and then you would just save it, and it, and it's really that simple. And this every 24 hours, it's going to update your keyword, uh, your rank data, and it's going to let you know how you're doing. And we're going to expand these features too to have nice charts and keep it pretty. Uh, one thing I do want to show you though is you can view the activity here actually, and you can see the the searches on your site. So I'll look at this most recent one here on. This website, FanDuel promo code. So we can see that it tried to open Google.com, great, and then it looked for this keyword, FanDuel promo code. Went to Google page one for 13 seconds, didn't find it. Went to Google page two for 32 seconds. This person was on page three for 12 seconds, and then the person finally found it and visited the website for 48 seconds, and then and then left. Now it's always different. Sometimes it's going to visit other inner pages. So here's one where it visits a few inner pages. Here's, okay, so this one visited a lot of different inner pages, visited some strategy page, uh, another blog page on it. So it's always different, and it always tries to mix it up. The time on site's different, but the end result's always the same. High CTR, high dwell time, better rank. Pretty straightforward formula. And uh, I think that pretty good coverage of the demo. Matt, is there anything else I need to add in this demo that I... I think too. I mean, it's really that's pretty forward. Yeah, I mean that the website you showed doesn't even have a lot of pages, but that's I guess on us. So yeah. So if you had a website with you know tons of inner page content, yeah, these people crowd searching your site are just gonna they're gonna be going through all these inter internal pages as well. Yeah. Right, Dwell time equals uh, what is that book? War and Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a never discussion. <laughs> Let me go back to this. All right, so do you see my PowerPoint now? Let's make sure. Yes. Yep, okay, good. All right, guys, so there is an offer with this. Uh, I mean, I hope I open your eyes, but this is this is also an opportunity for you guys to get in on the ground level of this service. And we've opened up to four plans with these credits. This is a one-time um, one time payment right here. And each plan is no more, the first plan is only a penny per credit, and it just gets significantly less as you go. But we're not even going to charge that since this is the first time and you guys have been with us for a long time. We'll do something special for you and cut these prices down even more. Right. So it's only $7 for the first plan up to $150 for the, the highest plan. It just depends completely on what you need. Each plan gives you full access to the entire search network, unlimited keywords, and up to seven minutes per visit. And we're actually going to throw in some bonus credits to you guys to make this really sweeten the pot, make this a no-brainer. So these bonus credits are just out of control. 500, 3,500, 9,000, and 25,000. And I'm going to, this offer is going to be available for three hours. And you can get to it at crowdsearch.me slash webinar. And after those three hours, I'm taking the offer down. I don't know when we're opening this back up, if we're opening this back up, but this is where we're at right now with it. 
And uh, I think at this stage, maybe, Matt, we could take some Q&A from, from the audience. Yes. I have some really good questions actually coming in. Okay. Um, T. Jr. asks, is this something we should do daily, monthly, or one time? Okay. Um, that's a good question. If, if you're one of these guys who does SEO and it's, you have more than one website, you're definitely going to want to continue to do this because there's always another keyword to rank and another website. And keep in mind, even if you were you, you do this for a while and you end up ranking on page one, great. You get to you get to um, number one on page one, perfect. But you still have competition, and don't forget the smart rank technology uh, of this system is going to optimize you if you rank. You know, when you rank number one, it's going to adjust based on that, adjust your searches, and it's always going to try and keep you at the top. Mm -hmm. So if you slip to number three, it's going to change and try to get you back to number one. So that's that's what the system is always trying to do. It's always trying to adjust. Yeah, so maintenance mode at that point. Yeah, essentially, that's what it is. Uh, Michael asks, what should my bounce rate be, and will this software help me lower it? Uh, Michael, good question. Your bounce rate really should be as low as possible in the sense that you want your site to be relevant to what people are, think they're clicking on, and the CrowdSearch Me system actually gives you zero bounce rate because every person in the search army has to stay on your website for at least a minute, but in most cases, up to you know somewhere between one minute and seven minutes randomly, and that excuse me that process alone is going to eliminate your bounce rate and essentially help any kind of negative bounce rate that you currently have. But I would encourage you to look if you do have a current bounce rate that's really bad as to why that is, because there might be an underlying problem there where your content is not matching up to what people think they're clicking to see. Okay. Greg N. asks, do I need to still build backlinks and social signals to my website if I use this? Uh, Greg, definitely, because I'm not going to stand here and lie to you and tell you that this is the silver bullet. Uh, I, I think it's incredibly powerful. I think it's the future of SEO. I think it's probably the most important thing that we're currently doing. That being said, you still need backlinks. You still need social signals because you need to come at your website from all angles. Look at it from Google's point of view. If you have a website and all you've been doing is building backlinks and social signals and you don't really have good CTR and dwell time, right there, that's a red flag to Google. So if you can combine all those things, backlinks, social signals, and now you add this missing piece to, to the pie, you've got CTR and dwell time, that just tells Google, hey, this website is, 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 is important. Let's rank it higher. And when you start getting into even the really competitive keywords, you definitely want to combine all these things into, in, into a strategy. Hope that answers your question. Yep, says thanks. Uh, Tim says, I thought Moz was completely white hat. Is CTR something Google would ever penalize, considering they just showed how powerful it is in these two separate case studies? <laughs> well, just because Moz was um, promoting CTR, going through this test and talking about CTR, I wouldn't say it's not white hat. If anything, I think this is the most white hat thing there is, and that whole debate between white hat and black hat, that's that's really a different discussion altogether. But I I don't see Google ever penalizing this type of system because it wouldn't make sense. It's counterproductive to what Google is trying to accomplish, and what they're trying to accomplish is provide relevant results, um, aside from making money with AdWords, that is. But um, they, they want to reward websites for providing content that people thought they were going to see when they clicked on it. And that goes back to the whole high CTR plus high dwell time is a good result. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just from a personal note, I, I learned it. Whatever Rand Fishkin or Moz says, I, I follow that on a, on a site that I absolutely cannot test and mess around with and get penalized. So if it comes from Rand Fishkin's mouth, it's, it's usually gospel in regards to safe SEO. Yeah. Um, I mean, Rob asks, uh, where, do the, where do the majority of these searchers live? Um, well, like I said in that one slide, they're, they're pretty much all over, but I, what I've tried to do is make sure I, I match it up against AdSense, so I do a lot, we have a lot, of, a lot of AdSense websites, and I looked at what countries are really giving me the most revenue, and they're usually English-speaking countries, primarily the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Australia, um, I think a couple in the Netherlands, uh, let me see, South Africa I think was one as well, so there's, we're all, we're all over the place, we're growing bigger every day. Okay. Um, Chuck asks, 
uh, he has six websites. How many how many credits should he get? And can he buy more credits if he uses these up? He I'm sorry, what he has what? Six websites? Yes. And how how many credits do you recommend? And can he all can he buy more credits if he uses the current credits up? Um, well, it it really depends on the search volume that he thinks his keyword has. So, if he's in a, if the search volume for his keyword is not very high, he could do well with a lower plan. And the beauty of the system is you can create unlimited campaigns. So let's say you buy a thousand credits, you can divide that amongst as many campaigns as you want. And I'll, I'm going to be very transparent with you right now. If, if you know those of you who take take advantage of this opportunity and buy tonight, you're going to be presented with uh, an option to upgrade for a monthly plan to lock in these prices for life and that will never happen again for you. That's the one-time offer and they'll, you get fresh monthly credits um, coming into your account every month that you don't even have to worry about. So yeah. if, you, if you're unsure of what how many credits you really need, uh, maybe we could talk to you afterwards on the chat and we could look at maybe some of your, your keyword volume. What you can do is go to semrush.com and type in your keyword and you can very quickly look at your keyword volume and kind of gauge from that. Now, if your keyword volume is something like 5,000, uh, just keep in mind that's the monthly keyword volume. You want to divide that by 30, and then that's going to be 100% of the keyword searches, which is completely unnatural. So you're going to want to look at you know, a small percentage of that is going to you. And that's what our smart rank technology does. Yeah, I was just going to say, you probably want to kiss that, you know, keep it, keep it simple. Yeah. And, uh, and the beauty of it, too, is that you can enter multiple keywords also, so you know it's. It would, I'm not saying if if you're concerned, get the smaller plan, uh, but if you do buy a larger plan to get large to get the bonus credits and and larger saving, know that none of that will ever be wasted because those credits do not get used. Correct, Dan, or they they roll over. That's correct. You don't ever lose credits, so they're always there. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see here. Let's take let's take one more credit uh, question, Matt, because I know people probably want to get back okay. to doing whatever they're doing. And then we we'll, we'll stay in the chat room for maybe five ten more minutes um, once we turn this uh, the audio off, and we'll answer some questions there. And uh, yeah, let you guys get back to your night. Appreciate uh, your time. You want to do two more? Someone asked me if you can because I was going to hide another one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. Do two more. That's fine. Okay. So John wants to know if he has to enter the specific inner page URL to find his specific keyword, or can he just enter the main domain? That's a good question. You're going to want to enter the, the exact URL. So if it's the main domain, enter that. If it's an inner page for that domain, enter that. We just wanted to make it super simple. So Because there are times where you may rank <clears throat> um, your domain for multiple keywords, and you want to target a specific inner page only. So we just made it really simple. Enter the exact URL that you want and the exact keyword that you want. And you can enter as many campaigns as you want, whether it's multiple inner pages, other domains, etc. Yeah, okay. This is the last one, but it's uh, two or three parts. How do I know this is working? Can I track and verify this in my Google Analytics? And will this work for ultra-difficult keywords? Okay, a lot of lot of good questions in there. Let me say, okay, it's definitely trackable. If you remember on the demo, I showed you the view activity, so that's one way to track it. Now, if you don't want to take that as the gospel, you can also go to your Google Analytics, and your Google Analytics is actually going to report this to you as organic search traffic because that's what it is. So that's verifiable. And I believe the second part was about ultra difficult keywords. Okay. Kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier where you want to combine this with a strategy of other things. Now this, don't get me wrong, we've, we've ranked websites with just crowdsearch.me. Now the ultra competitive keywords, you're going to need to do due diligence and put some more work into it. So you're going to need to combine this with some quality backlinks and quality social signals and you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that this is the silver bullet like I was telling you earlier. But it's pretty amazing in what it does. So short answer. Yeah. All right. I'd like to touch too. on that. Uh, I mean, everyone wants to win the one word, you know, ultra competitive keywords, you know, chasing them after. But unless you have an ultra great website to go along with that, you're, you know, it's it's really pushing a boulder up a hill. Uh, so I'm not saying go after micro niches, but go with what you already have. Go with what's working. Go with what's your passion, and uh, and do the other things. 
do the backlinks, do some social signals, but know that CTR and dwell time are the future because Google's Google ha- is beholden to its shareholders, which okay. are searchers at the end of the day. And if they aren't delivering a relevant experience to the end user, someone's going to hop over to Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo or something else. So Google's main focus is always going to be delivering the best result and that's going to be based on CTR and dwell time, as Moz has demonstrated, uh, and Dan demonstrated just now. Uh, and that's another point. So people ask, well, why is this now going, why are you offering this? Why don't you just keep it for yourself? And the honest answer is we can't make enough quality websites to utilize the service. So, you know, we we have a lot of websites. We have nearly a 1,000 websites, and we're using it on just about all of them. But guess what? We, you can, we can open this up and we can help a lot of other people out and cover some costs at the same time. So that's why Dan is now offering this to the public. Uh, it, it's very revolutionary at this low price to get in and lock in your low price for life. Uh, so I'm just really super excited about it and it's interesting to see something new in SEO being talked about other than just backlinks and social signals. All right. I think that covers it. Let's... Uh... Let's call it a night, Matt, and uh, we'll get to the chat room for a little bit and uh, help out a little bit more there. But for the most part, we're going to sign off. Guys, really appreciate you coming out tonight. I uh, hope you enjoyed the content. Um, I would ask that you do not share this link outside of um, this, this, this group. or Please don't share it on any message boards or anything like that. But it'll be, down, it'll be gone in three hours anyway, so mm-hmm. that's almost a moot point. But I just, I just want to keep this only to you guys because... You've been with us on our list for a while now. Matt, thank you for co-hosting and the uh, the intro earlier, which I did not really deserve, but I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, uh, you know, for releasing this. And, you know, when, you, when it started to come to fruition, I was really excited about it. Like I said, I'm a huge SEO nerd. Uh, you know, everyone does a little bit of something online, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be in this webinar. But this is something that I, I'm really happy and excited the way it came out. So you, you hit a home run here and... Uh, and I hope everyone comes along for the ride. All right, guys. We're going to sign off. And uh, if you have any questions or issues, uh, talk to us in the chat room, or you can just uh, send, a, send an email or look in our support desk. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.